Hi friends, I hope you're doing well. I wanted to follow through with part two on the new June 2020 study edition of The Watchtower. But before I start, in my last video on The Awake entitled, Are You Awake Yet? When I reviewed the newest Awake magazine, I had mentioned that I used to have to pay for my allotment of magazines and then would sell them at the door. And I had a few viewers kindly mention that they had never heard before that the magazines were purchased or sold. However, I had a few viewers angrily call me a liar. So I wanted to show you a copy of an older magazine that on the inside cover has the prices. Also, can you see this little pamphlet right here? How does the truth affect your life? Actually, this came in the New World Translation that I had purchased to a few years ago, this tract was actually in it. If you take a look at the back of this tract, we sold the, mat, the book, Let Your Kingdom Come, for a total cost of 75 cents. And so let's get back to the topic at hand. The article in the newest Watchtower that I had been reviewing is titled, Let Your Name Be Sanctified. And it's all about how Jehovah's Witnesses need to defend Jehovah's name. It discusses what happened in the Garden of Eden when Eve ate of the fruit. Here is what the Watchtower said that Eve should have said when approached by the serpent. Paragraph 11. Think for a moment about what Eve should have said to Satan. Imagine that she had said something like this. I do not know who you are, but I know my father Jehovah and I love and trust him. He has given Adam and me everything we have. How dare you say anything bad about him? Go away. How delighted Jehovah would have been to hear such loyal words from a loving daughter. But Eve did not have loyal love for Jehovah, neither was Adam guided by that quality. Lacking such love for their father, Adam and Eve failed, defend, failed to defend his name against slander. So the article talks a little bit more about Adam and Eve, and then it moves on to, Moses, to Moses. Here is something that I had found very interesting. On page nine, it says, Moses heard the following words, evidently spoken by an angel. Jehovah, Jehovah, a God merciful and compassionate, slow to anger and abundant loyal love, and truth showing loyal love to thousands, pardoning error and transgression and sin, Exodus 33 and Exodus 34. Memory of that event possibly came back to Moses when he used the name Jehovah. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to read the texts at Exodus 33 and Exodus 34 to see if scripture can back up what Watchtower claims as these words evidently were spoken by an angel. So let's take a look at these scriptures. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the thing also that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me your glory. And he said, the Lord said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Verse 20, and he said, you cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, and I want you to remember these words here, these two, this one sentence here. Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand upon a rock. Verse 22, and it shall come to pass while my glory passes by that I will put you in a cliff to the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by and I will take away my hand and you shall see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. So interesting here in verse 19 that the Lord said that he would himself proclaim the name of the Lord. But Watchtower said evidently it was an angel. So let's move on to Exodus chapter 34 to see if there's any more clues. 
because actually in Exodus 34, the Lord had passed by Moses when he was standing on that firm rock. And uh, let's see what happened. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and graceful, gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and the fourth generation. These are the scriptures that Watchtower had cited. The scriptures clearly state that the Lord was the one who said that he himself would proclaim his name. But Watchtower says evidently it was an angel. But let's go back to Exodus 33 to discuss the rock that I had mentioned to you. Here it is again in verse 21. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand upon a rock. You see, this is not the first time that Moses had an encounter with the rock, but I want you to hang in there with me because this is really so awesome. So I want to go back to when the Israelites were wandering around in the desert and they thought that they would just die of thirst. Exodus chapter 17, verse 6. The Lord says, Behold, I will stand before you there upon the rock in Horeb, and you shall smite or attack, strike, and you shall smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it and the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Now we're going to read Numbers 20, verse 8. It says, The Lord says, Take the rod and gather the assembly together, you and Aaron, your brother, and speak to the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. Verse 11. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. So here in Numbers 20, he was told to speak to the rock, yet he struck it twice. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. It says, talking about Israel, this whole chapter there is talking about when Israel was in the desert. It says, and Israel did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So Moses in Exodus chapter 17 was told to strike the rock and he struck it. And then in Numbers chapter 20, he was told to speak to the rock, but he struck it twice. That rock is Christ. So you see, striking the rock is a picture of Christ who was stricken for us when he died on the cross. Because you see, the Mosaic law represented our sins for which he was judged. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 says, Jesus blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was the Mosaic law, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. You see, Jesus, when he died, and was resurrected bodily, he fulfilled the entire Mosaic law for righteousness sake. So therefore, we do not have to fulfill the law anymore. But let me keep going here. So in contrast to striking the rock, speaking to the rock is a picture of the access that believers in Christ now enjoy to all the wonders of the grace of God in this life with the result that we drink the waters of salvation through believing the truth of the gospel about Jesus, which the Holy Spirit pours forth for us. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of the water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. 
Ephesians chapter 5. Husbands, love your wives either, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You see, that's what happened to me. If you heard my testimony in the video that I created called Why I Left, and I've mentioned it in a few other videos as well, but I had cried out to God to reveal his true self to me because I realized that the God of Watchtower is not the God of the Bible. So I realized after following Jehovah of Watchtower my whole life, I didn't know who God was, so I cried out to him, and he led me to read the Bible through from beginning to end, which I did. It took me 90 days, and I saw for myself what Jesus did for me when he died on the cross, and I recognized that reading the Bible alone without the aid of Watchtower publications washed me clean. I was washed by the word. I actually have a ministry event called Washed by the Word where I, I speak about my testimony. I've done that in many, many countries actually throughout the world. So back to Exodus chapter 33 where God had placed Moses on a rock before him, before he passed him, passed him by. You see, this rock, it was a secure location. It was a firm foundation. And that rock was Jesus. Here are just a few other scriptures about Jesus being the rock. If you want to read them, I would recommend reading them in the King James. If you don't have a King James Bible, BibleGateway.com, you can find these scriptures online because chances are they've been changed in other translations and then you'll be even more confused. So back to Watchtower. I want to show you something that I had never seen before. Tell me, when did Jehovah become a person with a capital P? In this paragraph 10 here, it says down at the bottom, but will the student obey Jehovah out of love for him as a person with a capital P? The other paragraph at the end, what does that tell us about him as a person? I never heard of this. Is this something new with the society, the governing body? Or did they make a mistake? I don't know. I never remembered this because the only one who was fully God and fully man is Jesus. I want to read something to you from the New World Translation, okay? This is what we're going to read from the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Here it is. John chapter 2, verse 19. In answer, Jesus said to them, Break down this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Therefore the Jews said, This temple was built in 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was talking about the temple of his body. So let me ask you, how could Jesus, who was a good teacher, a good prophet, how could Jesus claim to raise himself up on the third day if he was dead? I read it. I read it in the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Fully God, fully man, you tell me. But back to the article. It finished with Moses and it moves on to David. Can you guess what Watchtower is going to talk about when they talk about David, rather than David being a man after God's own heart or a very loyal, faithful king? Well, what do they always associate with David other than when Saul wanted to pin him to the wall? I remember an old, at an assembly when we had the old dramas and it, the drama ended with Saul wanting to kill David and pin him to the wall. Well, what do they always associate with David? Well, his sin 
with Bathsheba, right? Take a look at this on page 11 in the box. David, his heart became divided because between his desire for the woman, Bathsheba, and his desire to please Jehovah. Of course, they bring this up because you know what's coming next as they move on in the article with explaining the perils of refraining from what I call bad stuff. Page 12, seductive imagery in the box there on the left. It's easy to rationalize. For example, we might reason, well, I would not be disfellowshipped for doing this, so it must not be that serious. Such reasoning is deeply flawed. On the right in paragraph 15, I had to block out one of the words there because I was afraid YouTube would penalize it for me because uh, it's not a good word. And then throughout the whole ending of this article, it gives us a bit of good advice as to what we could do. Paragraph four, we could meditate on the one who bears that name. And then it also tells us next to meditate on the wonders of creation. It also tells us meditate on what Jehovah has caused us to become. And then over there on the right, meditate on such questions. No thanks, I'll meditate on the word of God because that's what the Bible tells us to do. You meditate on the word of God. Of course, it's great to, to look at creation and the trees and the, the, the beauty around us and, and recognize it that there is a creator and, and God created it for us, but we don't need to meditate on it. We're to meditate on the word of God. Joshua chapter one, verse eight, this book of the law shall not depart out of our mouth, out of your mouth, but you should meditate therein day and night for you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then you shall make the way prosperous and then you shall have good success. And then in second Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The Bible is all we need, friends. We don't need Watchtower at all. We can understand the Bible. Pick the Bible up and read it for yourself. You'll meet a God, especially if you're a Jehovah's Witness or a former Jehovah's Witness. You'll meet a God you never knew. I cried, I wept when I read the Bible without the aid of Watchtower Publications. It was a, a wonderful experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave you with that for this article. I may glance through the rest of it to see if there is a part three, I'm not quite sure yet, but this is the end of this series of articles about sanctifying Jehovah's name. It's all about Jesus, friends. Jesus is all we need. He's the living water. He's the rock, that firm foundation. He's all we need. He's given us salvation in the death and burial and resurrection of himself. He sacrificed himself, the king, the one who was born king. Trust him as your savior today, friends. Get, get on your knees and pray for forgiveness and accept Jesus as your savior. That's all I have for you today. I hope you all are well. I hope you're staying safe and I hope you have a great day.